and welcome to our first preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. Neil Perrett joins me as we look ahead to some midweek action in the Carabao Cup. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at that brilliant 3-1 win at St Mary's on Friday night. We'll also be discussing the under-21s and their progress in the Hampshire Senior Cup. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to the game against Burton on Wednesday night. But first, we're going to start back at Friday night and that superb 3-1 win at St Mary's. Let's take a look at the goals. Diego Rico has trotted across to swing this one in with his left foot as we hit nine minutes gone here on this Friday night at St Mary's. Rico then raises his right arm, whips it in towards the edge of the six-yard box, the header's there! And Nathan Ake has powered it home! The Cherries from their first set piece break the deadlock at St Mary's and Nathan Ake is in the right place so often is there with his head inside ten minutes. The Cherries in front. Joshua King down the left side of the box to Billing. This is a terrific build-up. Is there an end product? Harry Wilson! Oh, yes, there is! Another brilliant goal from Bournemouth at St Mary's! And now some space for Shea Adams on the left-hand side here for Southampton. This one is swinging in to end. Steve Cook comes in with a challenge. Penalty, says the referee. Southampton with Ward Prowse can halve the deficit in this derby game. Here he comes now, and he does score. It's a good penalty, no chance for Amstel. And St Mary's are given something to cheer. Southampton won, Bournemouth two. Ramsdale places it on the floor, clears it long, the four minutes are up by my watch, the time for that substitution is being added on by the referee as Callum Wilson tries to nip through, he's gone past gun, and Wilson will roll it into the net, and Bournemouth are going to win at Southampton for the first time in their history. Well, what a fantastic win that was. Neil, we've finally done it and we've we finally won at St Mary's. At long last, it's been, uh, I think it was the 16th attempt in the city of Southampton. Um, a memorable and fantastic night, like you said. Um, it was nip and tuck, but you know, obviously Callum's goal right at the end sealed it and everybody knew that was it. And some fantastic footage on um, on the club website that you've seen of the, the fans celebrating. It was a real, real win for the fans because... You know, they've waited so long to go there and, 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 you know, taste victory. And it's happened, you know, and it put the, you know, went up to third place in the league as well, which was an added bonus. I know we slipped with a few other results over the weekend, but hopefully that can now be, the, you know, the Everton win and that win springboard now to go on to some, some great things this season. And of course, as you say, it was a great win. Three goals as well to back up the three we scored against Everton. Yeah, um, th three good, go you know, some fantastic goals are being scored. It's been goals galore this week, you know, when you look at the, the women's team, the under-18s team, the under-21s in the first team, just so many goals being scored. You know, the ethos and the philosophy, you can see it in some of these team goals is all coming out now throughout all the levels. Uh, it's just making the goal of the month, the goal of the month competition is just going to be so impossible every month if we keep scoring goals like that. And let's talk about that second one, that Harry Wilson goal. It was a great team move, wasn't it? Well, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, the manager makes sure that the philosophy and the ethos starts right down, you know, with the under eights, the under sevens. If you go and see them training, you know, they're all playing the same way, you know, and then that's coming through all the age groups right up into the first team. And, you know, it's leading to goals like that one and goals like the under-21 scored last Tuesday night as well. Playing out from the back, loads of passes and then a finish. It's just fantastic to watch. And of course, it could have been more as well. Joshua King was given offside for a very, very tight decision, but VAR correctly got that one right. Yeah, um, not big fan of VAR, to be honest. Um, none of the Southampton players seemed to complain when he scored. Um, I think if that one had stood, I don't think anybody would have batted an eyelid at all. Um, he also had the penalty shout, which was could have gone either way. Steve Cook's probably was a penalty in hindsight when you've seen it again, so the referee certainly got that one right. But um, 
Joshua King really, really unlucky on um, Friday night. Finishes up on the winning team, which is great. But I think he, you know, his efforts have deserved a goal. You know, he deserved a goal. Um, playing slightly an unfamiliar role, but playing it so well. And, you know, the team are really benefiting from his efforts there. You mentioned Joshua King there. He got man of the match on Friday and he was brilliant on the wing, wasn't he? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's made no secret of the fact that he would, you know, rather play up front. You know, he, he says he's a striker and he's been scoring some goals for, for Norway up front. But, you know, the, the last two games, 3-1 wins, the manager certainly got things right with who's playing where. So uh, long may it continue. And let's just talk about that second half. It was nervy for a while, wasn't it? Southampton got that goal quite early on and then, you know, they, they really ground it out at the back, didn't they? Well, let's be let's be honest. At half time, you know, the Southampton manager's gone in there and he's probably they've got nothing to lose. They're two 0 down. Um, the next goal is, you know, gonna be important because if we'd have got it three 0 it's almost killed the game. They got the next goal and they got it early as well from a from a penalty which we said probably was a penalty. So obviously it's going to be, you know, backs to the wall then, but what a fantastic defensive effort from everybody, not just the back four. Um, you know, Steve Cook and Nathan Aki are obviously a, a fantastic partnership, possibly developing into one of the best partnerships in the league, can, dare I say. Um, Steve Cook's performance got people talking about him being called up for England again, which, you know, can't be far away now the way that he's playing. But... Um, you know, maybe in seasons gone by, we might have conceded a second and possibly lost a game like that. But just shows you how the strides are being made that, you know, we've come on, we held on, we dug in, got the third goal and killed them off in the end. And sixth in the table, 10 points. It's a it's a great position to be in, isn't it? Well, it is fantastic when you look back, you know, two or three weeks, people are sort of little bit concerned because you know we hadn't made a fantastic start losing at home to Man City well you know uh, drawing you know with with Sheffield United and then losing at Leicester I think it was after the Leicester game you know some people were rather prematurely pressing the alarm bells but now all of a sudden back-to-back -back wins we've matched our best start in the Premier League after six games with 10 points you know and we didn't really push on last season when we got to 20 points because we got it so early so let's see if we can push on this season and keep it going and who knows where it could lead us to. Absolutely. Well, a brilliant win for the first team there. And it was also a great week for the under-21s who made it through in the Hampshire Senior Cup with an 8-0 win over Basingstoke. Let's take a look at the goals of that one. But it reaches Hamilton on the edge of the box. It's a good challenge there. And a shot by Kilkenny! It's into the bottom corner! A really good strike from the young Irishman. 1-0 here on AFCB TV. It's Gavin Kilkenny does well to win that ball back. And he can drive forward now, Kilkenny. Good opportunity here. Looks to chip the goalkeeper from distance. And it's in! What a goal by Gavin Kilkenny! An unbelievable strike from the young Irishman. To his right, plenty of options in field. One of those is Alex Dobray. Dobray to Hamilton. Oh, it's a great knock. Scrimshaw shot! Off the post, he'll get another go! It's in! Really good finish from Jake Scrimshaw. Captain Dean Stone, Reuben Collins were both sent off in that one as Lloyd Kelly drives forward now for the Cherries. Kelly to Jaden Anthony. Lloyd Kelly with a chance to cross. It's a low on, Scrimshaw's there! Cool as you like. A great cross from Lloyd Kelly and Scrimshaw did the rest. And Hamilton's away here. Checks in field. Anthony. Pace the attack and Anthony goes a goal! What a strike! Well, the goals have been of a high standard tonight, but that's up there with them. What a finish! Finessed into the top corner. Combined here as Anthony drives forward. It's got Kelly on the outside, finds him. Kelly cuts it back to kill Kenny on a hat trick. Drills one low, it's in! It might have taken a nick on the way through, but I'm sure Gavin Kilkenny will claim that. Will Dennis now looks to get an attack going from the back. Dennis finds Kilkenny. Charlie, obviously Gavin scored a hat-trick. He's not really known for scoring many goals, but just tell us how he's been working on that side of his game. Yeah, like I said earlier, he's always working hard. He's always in the gym, you know, working on his finishing and working on his working on his game. He's been with the first team, obviously. Um, that's probably improved him in a sense, you know what I mean? He's, he's training a lot. I'll just interrupt you here as Lloyd Kelly drives on a goal! What a finish! Back from injury, 
and he's on the score sheet. Lloyd Kelly, brilliant drill shot, low into the bottom corner. Hamilton drops the shoulder and drinks his side. He's got Anthony in front of him if he can find him. And he has found him. Anthony beats one, looks to chip the goalkeeper. Oh, it's in! Jaden Anthony, just like Gavin Kilkenny, has lobbed the goalkeeper and found the net. Well, what a win for the under-21s there. Neil, you were at the game and there were eight fantastic goals there, weren't there? There's a cliche, you can only beat what's put in front of you. We, we, we beat Basingstoke 8-0. They're, they're, they're struggling in their own league. They're obviously non-league. They've been relegated and they're bottom of the league they've been relegated into. They came here and, you know, we fielded a really strong side and you would have expected us to win comprehensively. We did. It was a very professional job. Um, a very strong side, like I said. Great experience for some of the under-21 lads to play with some of the first-team players. And Sean Cooper and Mark Molsey will be looking at that and thinking that that's a job well done. You know, this is what we're here to do. Um, produce performances like that, not just the goals, it was the performance as well. It was clinical, it was comprehensive, it was emphatic. Um, and there wasn't many people here. And, you know, if we get a, if we don't play at home too often in this competition, but... If we do get a home draw in the next and play at home, I would encourage people to come along because there's some great talent to be seen in the under 21s and the under 18s and below. And you know, you talk about the great talent there, Gavin Kilkenny. It was a superb night for him, and, and what a hat trick! Well, we were sitting there watching the game, and then all of a sudden, this lob came out of nowhere from 40 yards, and it was just quite remarkable to see. Uh, I was scratching my head. I've been here and watched a lot of games here, and I'm not sure I've ever seen a goal scored at this ground from that far out. In all the time I've been coming, I don't know other older supporters might uh, correct me and say that they they do remember one. I remember Darren Anderton scoring a free kick from about 30 yards, but this was a, a good 10 yards further out. What a, it was a fantastic goal from an absolutely incredible talent, uh, Gavin Kilkenny. We've seen his emergence in the past couple of months in the first team, but he's obviously been doing it at the under-21s in seasons gone by so he's certainly got a bright future ahead of him and we saw goals like that being scored from 40 yards and then we also saw a brilliant goal which was finished by Lloyd Kelly and it was great to see him back on the pitch wasn't it fantastic I, I think I said he looks like a Rolls Royce of a defender he was absolutely so classy on Tuesday night really looks the part um, looked like he could step into the first team if, if required even now after you know a seven or eight week layoff I think it was uh, looked very fit um, very athletic, bombing up and down that left left hand side. I think the managers described him as in, in in the sort of vein of a traditional Bournemouth left back. You know, people will remember. Well, we've obviously got Charlie Daniels, who's sadly out injured at the moment, but he's a, another traditional Bournemouth left back. People are like Jamie Vincent and Paul Morrell. You can reel them off, and you can see that Lloyd Kelly certainly got that in his locker. We saw Lloyd Kelly play. We also saw Simon Francis play. And, and for someone that you know injured his ACL back in December, his first minutes back on the pitch, he, he settled in well, didn't he? What an absolutely fantastic, what a sigh of relief that he must have breathed when he came out of that tunnel uh, nine months. You know, he's, 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 he's an older guy as well. So to get that injury is going to be slightly more difficult for him to overcome, you would imagine. I don't know, I've never been through it, but... You know, the way that medicine is these days, guys are getting over these injuries a lot quicker and a lot better, as we've seen with Callum, who's had two. Um, and when you watch him play, you wouldn't think he'd ever been injured the way he the way he's come back from his. So hopefully, Frano can be the same. Um, there's a chance that he could feature on Wednesday night in the Carabao Cup. It remains to be seen. The manager certainly hinted at that. That would be great to see him back there. Absolutely, and for a couple of youngsters, we had Dinesh Galella and Ryan Glover play their first minutes as well, which has perhaps gone a little bit unnoticed given Simon Francis and Lloyd Kelly out there. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, there's injured players at all, all levels, and, um, you know, when you're sort of 19 or 20, it's never good to get a really long term injury. I know Ryan Glover's had a long, long time out, no football, um, a really infectious sort of character. We interviewed him after the game, and you, you can only wish these guys well when they come back. Dinesh was a strange injury. I think it was a dead leg to start with, which, you know, you'd only think someone's going to be out a few days, but then it led to other uh, other complications. So it's great to see him back. He looks like a quite a powerful, imposing central defender. So two guys for the future and great to see them back on the comeback trail. And just for those players who, who are in the under-21 squad, what a great experience for them to come and play here. Yeah, um, like I say, we normally surrender home advantage in the Hampshire Senior Cup. I know that 
the, the manager Sean Cooper and Carl Fletcher before him always wanted to, you know, see the lads go away, uh, cut their teeth at some of these, you know, non-league grounds, Wessex League, wherever it is. Um, but Basingstoke have, like I said, had their problems. Their ground sharing with Winchester. Uh, we wanted to play some first team players, so we wanted to. We we came out of the hat first. So we played the game here, and you know, playing under the lights on the main Premier League ground. Fantastic experience for the lads. Absolutely. Well, our attention now turns to Wednesday night and that Carabao Cup game against Burton. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in this morning's press conference. To try and get through is the is the main objective. Um, However we do that, you saw in the last round it was a penalty shootout, that wasn't ideal, but we got through and in cup competitions it's just about being in the hat for the next round, that's what we'll endeavour to do. Winning is the only thing that really brings a squad together, I think you can do loads of other things, but winning is the ultimate determination in the group is to, is to produce better performances together with the results, so that's what we're keen to do. I think we're, we're waiting to see um, before naming the squad, we've got a couple of injuries from, from uh, Friday night, hopefully nothing too serious. So uh, we'll see you know, what squad we take. So there'll be opportunities for players. I hope they grasp it with both hands. Um, tough game. Whenever you go away from home um, to lower league opposition, you know they're very difficult matches. We know Nigel Clough, obviously, from previous encounters, we know he's always organised teams and always difficult teams to beat. So yeah, we look forward to the game, but we know it's going to be tough. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning ahead of tomorrow's game against Burton. Neil, another midweek game under the lights up at the Pirelli Stadium. What can we expect from Burton? It'll be another tough, tough test, won't it? Well, certainly. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be looking to progress as we are. Uh, they're doing reasonably well in League One. I know they've had a couple of hiccups in their last couple of games, uh, but Nigel Clough will certainly have them very well organised. They've got home advantage. They'll be looking for a for a Premier League scout, which is what we are now. You know, sometimes maybe lose sight of that because you know we were there you know not long ago we were we were the league one league two club looking to upset the apple cart in these competitions but yeah i mean you know certainly i'm really looking forward to when to uh, to wednesday night when we play burton because could have some more injured players coming back it's going to be great to see who the manager picks could see some people that we haven't seen a lot of so it'll be great to, to get them back on the comeback trail and we've got fond memories of playing at burton don't we talking about that promotion many years ago yeah, it was um, 2010, we clinched promotion from League Two to League One. Uh, it's the only game we've had at the Pirelli Stadium. I remember uh, Brett Pittman scored and then Alan Connell scored right at the end and everybody went wild, obviously, as you would when you're winning promotion. But what one of my most fond memories of that day is how accommodating all the people at Burton Albion were. You know, it was their first season in the Football League, I seem to remember, if not sec first or second but, you know, it was a real celebration for us and they just let us enjoy the moment and celebrated. Probably as they had the year before when they won promotion. So they knew, you know, it was fresh in the memory for them. But, you know, there was no jobs worth sort of attitude where there could have been at some places. You can't do this or you can't do that. And I think that's really struck up of an affinity between the two sets of supporters. You know, thanks very much for letting us enjoy our day. You know, really, really appreciated it. And as for Burton, you know, last season they had a fantastic run in, in the Carabao Cup and they got to the semi-finals against Man City. So they've got a good history in the competition, don't they? Yeah, I'm not saying that they're going to be hoping to go one better and put, put that right. You know, obviously not. But, that, that, you know, they've, they've only been in the league for sort of, you know, 10 years. So they haven't been playing in the competition very long. But... When you look back at their history before being in the league, it was a rapid rise. They were climbing through the leagues. Um, I think we played them um, in the 56-57 cut run that we had and they were in the Birmingham Senior League or something like that. So I know that was a while ago, but they were in the lower leagues for, for, a, for um, only a short period of time and it was a rapid rise. So fair play, they've done really well to get to where they are. And in terms of us, as you said, we could have some injured players coming back and also, also some players that might not have had the game time they'd have wanted this season. Yeah, well, we've spoken about uh, Lloyd Kelly and, and Simon Francis. I think there's probably a chance that they, they could feature. Um, Arnout Danjuma as well is another one on the on the road to recovery. And I think the manager you know, dropped his name in and said that he, he could also feature on uh, tomorrow night against Burton Albion. So it would be great to see him. We only saw him fleetingly in pre-season before he got his injury. And then, you know, other players coming back, obviously, still got Lewis Cook, who still, you know, wants some minutes under his belt to, to get his full fitness back. So let's see what team the manager picks. Absolutely. And, and you know, we've got the likes of Jack Simpson as well, who it'll be a great experience. Another game time for him, should he play as well? Yep. Jack's, um, 
as I said, with Steve Cook, Nathan Aki forming such a fantastic partnership at the back there, it's going to be difficult to get in ahead of those two. But, you know, who knows what could happen down the line? There's injuries, there's suspensions and stuff like that. And Jack Simpson will know that this is his chance to show that he's ready when called upon. If selected, of course, I'm not second guessing the manager's team, but this is what, you know, this is what this competition's been all about for us in the last few years. You know, we've reached the quarter final. The manager's made a lot of changes every time. Um, but you know we've gone gone to the last we've gone to the last eight in the last two seasons. So you know, hopefully we can go one or two better this season. <laughs> Absolutely, and of course you know we've had back to back wins, and to get another win on Wednesday night that would just keep the momentum going into the weekend, wouldn't it? Well, that's what you need. We, we said we've got West Ham on on Saturday. West Ham have hit some form as well. We need to keep we need to keep the momentum going, like you said, with a win. You know, I'm not saying a defeat at Burton would you know. You know, put the put, take the gloss off everything. I mean, that's certainly not the case. But you know, winning breeds confidence. You know, we've seen that with you know we beat Everton after the Leicester defeat. We beat Everton and we went into the Slampton game full of confidence, and it showed in the performance. The confident the the performance was full of confidence, and um, yeah. So if we can sort of keep the run going on tomorrow night that would be fantastic absolutely it's going to be a very exciting game indeed if you are going to Burton we hope you have a safe journey up there but if not make sure you keep an eye on all of our social media for the latest updates bye for now